respond to cover station 84 on the work instructions. We're, we're there to support them if they need additional resources. Anything. We're there to support them and make sure they get what they need. I support the firefighter on the ground. Seeing that all the fires are getting what they need. We are your support system. And we're here to support you. They are a voice on the other side of the radio. They get you the supplies and resources you need. They provide you with information and updates. But who are they and what do they do? How much do you know about the dispatch system? You are about to get a crash course on the three-tier dispatch system and how it works. The primary mission of the National Dispatch System is the timely, cost-effective, and efficient coordination, mobilization, and demobilization of wildland fire resources. The wildland fire dispatch system is made up of three tiers. Each tier has a unique role in the system. Tier 3 includes all of the local level dispatch and coordination centers across the United States. Local dispatch centers are responsible for initial attack response and incident support. The job at the local level is you are in charge of engines and aircraft and crews and overhead and those are your resources that you use for your local fires and when those are depleted and you don't have um, enough for your fires, that's when you contact the GAC and then the GAC level helps us um, get other resources either from neighboring dispatch centers or from other geographical areas to assist us with that fire. On the local level, the, the third tier dispatch center, uh, we get to work more with the field folks and, uh, than they do at the GAC level. And I think that is a benefit to me as a dispatcher, being able to get the whole picture. Um, we are there for them. We're their, their link you know, to anything outside of our own little local area. So I think we, um, we have that uh, working knowledge with them about uh, their needs and then uh, uh, what they want. Uh, and so we are like their conduit to the national side of things. Tier 2 includes the 10 Geographic Area Coordination Centers, or GACs, each of which serve a specific geographic portion of the United States. GACs are made up of several local dispatch centers and are responsible for mobilizing resources internally among local dispatch centers to meet existing and anticipated needs. So dispatching um, at a GAC, a Geographic Area Coordination Center, is a lot different than a Tier 3 local dispatch center or even at the Tier 1, the National Coordination Center. So Geographic Coordination Centers are much more about coordinating and not really dispatching. Uh, what we look at is, is that we have a large number of requests for additional resources or for additional information about incidents or um, values at risk. So at a geographic level, we typically are more coordinator related. So we're looking at um, information in different ways, aggregating information to try and, and gain um, a better sense of what our uh, critical shortages might be, what our, our incident needs might be. And so if you're a firefighter in the field and you're looking for a type one shock crew to come in to support you on your incident, and there's another dispatch area that has a similar type of an incident with a similar type of a need, we at the geographic level are going to be looking at those two requests and trying to determine how best to meet those needs. My whole job is to get stuff to them so that they can do the job. And then when the fire's out and the job's done, then it's my job to track that other stuff home. In a nutshell, that's what I do. I track them. Tier 1 is the National Interagency Coordination Center, NIC. The NIC's principal mission is cost-effective and timely coordination of land management agency emergency response for wildland fire at the national level. The NIC positions resources across the country to meet existing and anticipated incident, preparedness, severity, wildland, and prescribed fire needs regardless of geographic location or agency affiliation. Our job is to coordinate the mobilization of emergency resources across the nation and internationally to primarily wildland fire incidents but also all hazard incidents. 
The differences in the job of a dispatcher between the, the three tiers, that being local, geographic, and national, primarily at the local level where the bulk of the work gets done, the initial response. Uh, those local centers are primarily the tactical initial response to an incident. At the geographic and national levels, we're more strategic and, uh, and priority setting uh, functionally. We, we have to look at, uh, at multiple fires and determine what the best strategy is looking down the road. Dispatchers at all three tiers use a computer program to order and track resources. Resource orders are created to mobilize resources and help meet any specific incident needs. When you place an order in the system, it's always going to be much faster when you can get it in your local center, in your local zone, or your neighboring zones. Hence why we tell folks, go closest forces first, because that's going to be your immediate response. As you move out into the GAC, not only do you have to find the resource, get approval from the local to be able to let that resource go, get them together and get them on the road, and then the drive time or the fly time or whatever the travel time is to get there, now you're talking hours, days sometimes to be able to get a resource in a timely manner. So when, when you're talking about the system, you place the order, it can't get it local, you can't get it at your um, neighbors, comes to the GAC. The GAC then reaches out to all the other dispatch centers in the GAC, and if we can't find it there, it has to go to Nick. And then Nick needs to decide, yes, California may be closest to the Great Basin in this example, but they may be in PL5, so they're not going to go to the PL5 to pull resources away from them. They're going to go to an area that's not busy to support us. And that may be Rocky Mountain, Southwest, Eastern area, Southern area, further out you go. So that's why and how it kind of goes through the system. So when a resource sees someone else of the same type going to a local fire that they might be qualified for, there are some things they may not consider. It could be a federal only order or an agency only order. It could be one that says uh, no contractors, no cooperators. We have to abide by that. Many factors can affect resource mobilization including incident prioritization, resource allocation, and drawdown levels. When competition for wildland fire resources occurs and there are not enough resources available to meet the needs of the incidents, multi-agency coordination groups, MAC groups, are activated to establish incident priorities and resource allocation. MAC groups can be activated at all three tiers what we really try and focus in on is what, are the, what is the work that needs to be done on an incident. If it requires two Type 1 crews for three days and you need a helicopter to, to support them, then let's, let's look at that work that, that happens at, at the incident level and, and mitigate those potential values at risk. The other side of the coin is now that we have multiple objective incidents, not every fire are we putting out at the smallest size. So we have to factor in those, those kinds of things to, to uh, achieve, uh, achieve landscape objectives, which oftentimes may require those same resources that we're using for full suppression. Uh, off, you know, sometimes weather patterns dictate where you, know, you, may, you may be moist up north and, and dry down south or you know, windy down south and not so much up north. Those kinds of things are an east-west orientation. Uh, so we always have to pay attention to, to those factors um, and, and critical fire weather events and respond appropriately. So sometimes those resources in the middle uh, you know, you may need to take a resource from up north and drive south and, and unfortunately drive past uh, uh, some folks in the middle. In terms of prioritizing and allocating those resources, depending upon preparedness level, either the National Coordination Center will have discretion to prioritize and allocate those, or we will implement priority decisions of the National Multi-Agency Coordinating Group uh, at preparedness level three and above. So what that means is when we're really busy, 
the national fire directors, uh, those individuals that make up the national multi-agency coordinating group will convene daily once or twice, be briefed by our office, and then determine what the priorities are and, and the resulting allocations from those priorities and task the NIC with implementing those decisions. The three-tier dispatch system is quite complex. It requires dedication, communication, cooperation, and passion. The system is designed to meet the mission of dispatch, but the people who use it desire nothing more than to provide the best possible support to field-going personnel. Seeing that all the fires are getting what they need. Well, I support the firefighter on the ground. We're, we're there to support them if they need additional resources. We're there right? to support them and make sure they get what they need. We are your support system. 